All right, uh, new talk, sample size and power calculations. Let's keep it very simple. Uh, thanks to, thank you to Emil Hodzik Santor uh, for helping to create these slides. Um, so, you know, when you're designing a study, uh, let's think about what information you know before the study is conducted. So we don't know what our p-value will be. We don't know what our confidence interval will be will be. But hopefully there's other studies that we can use to estimate um, the key information we need for this new study. I'll bring this to life shortly. Because really, at the end of the day, we want to estimate how many patients, how large will our study be uh, in order to have enough data to reach a conclusion. Um, so four important values, um, sample size, this is the number of subjects needed in the study, uh, effect size, this is estimated from previous studies. What do I mean by that? Your effect size might be the cure rate of some new treatment, as an example. Um, your significance level, which is often set at 0 0.05, and power, which is usually at least 0 0.8. Um, you can also call that 80% power. So how do we reach a conclusion? Uh, as a summary statement, most often in medicine, we come up uh, with a hypothesis and we have some null hypothesis and then we uh, take part in a study and we see if we can reject that null hypothesis. Uh, I can bring this to life shortly. So uh, a null hypothesis might be this new treatment A is the same as B. Uh, and our goal uh, often is to reject that null hypothesis. Uh, and instead we identify, hey, treatment A is not the same as B. Uh, maybe treatment A is better. So what is statistical power? Um, put very simply, it is the probability that the trial will detect a true effect if one exists. Uh, as mentioned, Usually for randomized trials, um, the power is at least 80%. You want to have at least 80% power. Um, and to achieve that power, you'll use a calculator to see, all right, how many patients am I going to need in my study? Um, this is a two-by-two two table. It's easy to get bogged down in the details. So if you want to learn more, you can pause the screen. Uh, but essentially what it's walking you through is that there's some true situation, you know, like some drug works or it doesn't work. Um, and then your study is going through some form of hypothesis testing. And often what you're trying to do is reject the null hypothesis. So um, down in this corner, this is what we would call a true positive, and this is what power represents. It's a probability that the trial will detect a true effect if one exists. So when do I use a power calculation? Uh, ideally, you want to do it before you started collecting your data, okay? Before you started collecting your data is when you are going to come up with your power or sample size calculation. Very frequently, this is required um, when you are uh, applying for a grant, for example, and definitely for clinical trials, this has to be done beforehand uh, and registered accordingly. It is very poor practice to collect your data and then calculate the power and say, hey, we had this um, uh, amount of power. No, no, no. You have to do it before you've collected your uh, data. Let's walk through a toy example. We have some treatment A, and on average, it results in 88% of patients being cured of cancer. And there's some new treatment, treatment B, that might achieve a cure of 92%. Where do you come up with these numbers? Um, based on prior studies, um, prior published literature. So what we want to do in our study is we want to um, come up with first, what's our null hypothesis? That treatment A is the same as B. And then we're going to conduct a study that hopefully is sufficiently large so that we will have the st statistical power to reject the null hypothesis um, if indeed treatment A is not the same as treatment B. So... Um, uh, these are the, the data points that we've talked about so far. So for this study that we might uh, undertake, we will have an estimate of what we expect the cure rate in the control group, um, an estimate of what we expect in the experimental group. Again, these estimates are based on prior studies. Uh, most often, your alpha or significance level set at 0.05. And as mentioned, the uh, statistical power usually is at least 0.8. But what on earth do we do with these values? So 
in this case, you can use these values to help um, calculate how large of a sample size will you need for uh, a power of 80%. There are programming languages and there's some uh, websites you can use, but none of them are very user-friendly if you don't have a coding background. So we created this website called powercalc.ca. It's free to use, and I think will make your life way easier when you're calculating power or sample size for a grant or from, for some study that you're going to be conducting. So this is what it looks like. You can click and select, do you want to calculate sample size or do you want to collect power? Um, you select what type of outcome uh, your study has. And then is it a superiority trial, which is a vast majority of clinical trials or a non-inferiority trial? If you're doing a cohort study, um, you can still use this power calculator. Uh, it will give you an accurate estimate of the sample size. And for a cohort study, you could just select superiority trial. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we put in the numbers. Uh, so our 92% is the, um, uh, again, what we would have gotten from the literature for our estimate of the uh, cure rate in the experimental group. 88% that's the estimate uh, based on prior studies in the control group. Um, power, the default is 0.05, but using powercalc.ca, you can change it to your liking. And then um, statistical power, uh, the default's 0.8, uh, but you can change that uh, accordingly, especially if you want more statistical power. But if you want more power, that means a much larger sample size is required. And then after you've selected all of these, it provides you with a nice summary statement, which you can copy and paste for your grant or your uh, paper or wherever, and um, it just provides you with the overall estimate of here's how many patients you're going to need in your study. So in this case, remember, we selected sample size, and that's why it's providing us with this at the end. If instead you wanted to calculate power, um, then it would give you an estimate of the power at the end. I uh, hope this helps. Leave any comments, questions, concerns below, and have a great day. Oh, and here's a recap slide. You can pause here um, for a, a recap on everything we just discussed.